Welcome to this very special Labor Day edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. And in honor of Labor Day, we are taking the night off. But we did put together a very special show for you, something that's really important right now. Mandatory vaccines are on the rise, but there are still no repercussions for Big Pharma. Big Pharma can just force you and your children to get vaccinated and they are immune from any vaccine related injury. Now, Rob Dew covered the InfoWars Overdrive Hour and he covered a lot of articles just showing the rise of vaccine related injuries and of course took some phone calls from viewers out there and we got so many phone calls from concerned parents, especially in the state of California, where SB 277 has passed mandatory vaccinations for all school children. And then after that, David Knight interviewed a whistleblower. She exposed the fact that preemie babies are still being injected with vaccines, even after doctors knew that they would suffer, that they would be injured. So that's all coming up. Check it out. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. I really want to send a message to the globalists, to Big Pharma, to all the vaccine pushers out there. If people get this video out, we're going to put this up by itself, this last hour of people with their vaccine side effects stories. We're going to put it out. We're going to let people know this is happening. When they say they're safe and effective, they're lying to you. And I'm going to prove it in more ways than one. I also have some articles here that I'm going to go through. But let's go ahead and let's take our first caller here. This is Matthew calling from Florida. Matthew, what is your story? Yeah, hi. I uh, I have a uh, four-year-old son who was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes back in uh, August of 2013. And I noticed uh, some symptoms right after he had the hepatitis B vaccine. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still pretty frazzled. I live in Florida. We actually moved from San Francisco in 2012, and, uh, you know, I'm just at a loss, and, you know, he's in pre-K now, and I'm, you know, getting all sorts of pressure. I got a letter that was sent home saying that, uh, you know, if he wasn't up to date with his immunizations, that he's going to get, uh, he's not going to be allowed to go back to school, and, uh. That's the gist of it. Well, one thing they'd never tell you, and I'm not sure what the laws are like in Florida, is that there are exemption forms. They're usually, they're, I think there's religious exemption in all but two states, and I think those are uh, Mississippi and West Virginia. And then you have conscientious objection. And a lot of other states, there, there are a few that don't allow that, but most states do allow a religious exemption. In fact, uh, mother just won a legal battle to refuse vaccine for her child made of aborted baby parts. And this is out of Life News. Um, a New York woman has won a legal battle to refuse a vaccine for her child because it was made from aborted baby parts. The vaccine MMR for measles, mumps, and rubella are required by New York City schools for enrollment. However, the woman was granted the exemption on religious grounds because she opposes abortion and the vaccine uh, used from tissue collected from them. So there's an activist post article that ties in with that. Aborted fetal cells in products and vaccines. And if you go click... Uh, go through a few pages of it. It lists the vaccines and who makes them. And MMR2, measles, mumps, and rubella from Merck, right there. The uh, chicken pox, uh, Verifax, the chicken pox uh, uh, vaccine there, the polio vaccine, hepatitis A. So it's all in there. And all these are made, they're called, they call it diploid cells. That's their code word for it. But 
they take these aborted baby cells and that's how they grow this type of media uh, medium to make the vaccines. So uh, thank you for your story, Matthew. We're going to go to Mankind in Arizona. How are you doing today? Doing all right, Rob. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, first I just wanted to say, um, you know, it's kind of like an aha moment. Uh, I just want to make two points, and then I'll let you keep rolling with the show. But uh, the first aha moment, uh, this this whole situation with the, the Farrakhan, you know, leading the, uh, you know, Million Man March again in October and stuff like that, people need to keep an eye on that uh, because that – mixed with the the information that Trump is now putting out as far as for, you know, Obama being the head and basically being the front runner for ISIS, which are, you know, Muslim, uh, you know, not, not saying anything against the religion, but that's everything put together. It's, it's almost like a no brainer what's about to happen next. So I just kind of want everybody to keep their eyes open on what, um, you know, the Million Man March is going to happen in October. And um, the last thing that I wanted to say was as far as for with the vaccine, um, I'm actually, I used to, it's kind of a hard story to tell because I actually used to be, you know, I worked for a pediatrician. And, you know, you get into the job for the right reasons to help mm -hmm. these kids and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I used to give shots to the kids thinking that that it would help them you know and because they know, tell you that they're safe and effective they ground that into your head safe and effective safe and effective don't they right mm -hmm. and and after a while i actually started to see the same thing i was because you know there's just a pediatrician's office you see the same kids coming in uh, and i started noticing that whole situation to where it's like they're their lights look like they got put out from taking the vaccines and the mothers would come back in and ask me, Hey, you know, um, you know, ever since uh, they got their shots and you know, this and that happened or whatever, um, sometimes they would have seizures or they would say, they're just not, they haven't really been the same. They've been violently sick and blah, blah, blah. And they would actually start asking me because they didn't really trust even what the doctors were telling them at that point. And it was at that point that I actually took some of the inserts from the vaccines, read the whole thing myself. And there's a million words on there, but yeah. I found that exact same situation to where it's like, it says right here that it's not helping. It's not helping you at all. It's, it's, it's almost like a trial. And I actually ended up having to, quit my job because literally morally I couldn't take it anymore. It was either get, get paid or continue and continue to hurt kids or, you know, and I, I, I had to take the alternative. I had to quit. Yeah. And we and played no a, a work. We played a portion of an interview um, that David Knight did talking with a nurse who w admitted that they knew they were given preemie babies the vaccine, the regular vaccine schedule, and they knew these kids were going to be hurt. So they were getting the intubators ready so they could help them breathe when they stop breathing. These things literally kill you and they have to put the intubator in so the kids don't die. It's, it's crazy. And, you know, it, it takes great courage to step away from that. But people need to start speaking out because if you look at the vaccine schedule from where it was when people like you and I were born compared to now, it's almost triple, quadruple of what they were giving kids back then. And, you know, I know plenty of people my age now that have allergies and this and that. And that's where all this stuff comes from. When the brain gets attacked, it goes into defense mode. And defense mode can come in any forms. In fact, if you guys can roll the video of, of the girls in uh, Columbia um, writhing on the floor after their uh, HPV shot. I mean, this is what happens. And the only reason we see it here on a mass scale is because they're doing this all at school. And so all these girls are having the reaction at the same time. In your case... It's happening on a case-by-case -case basis. So parents aren't seeing the connection. And these people, I had one of our uh, interns was translating this. They don't know, they're like, we don't know what's going on. We need help. We need help. And you're, the reason they're not getting help is because the establishment, Big Pharma, knows that these are side effects to their vaccines and they let it happen. So thank you for your call, mankind. Buck, 
What is your vaccine story? Well, I've got a four-year-old granddaughter. Uh, and uh, at about a year and a half, uh, this is before I knew of any of the dangers of vaccines. You know, I had no clue until I started to listen to, to Dr. Jen Penny, and I kind of just kind of went down a rabbit hole and found this information. Uh, but at a year and a half, uh, we our granddaughter came over to our house two days after she'd had her vaccination. And it was like the light had gone out of her eyes. She had a, a blank stare on her face. She wasn't the same. I looked at my wife and I said, what's the matter with her? You know, we couldn't figure it out. So I ended up going to the pediatrician uh, after I'd done some research with my daughter. And the pediatrician just lambasted me, you know, for even being there and even even questioning. How dare uh, you he question was, he us? Was trying to ask the question. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We go to school for this, man. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But here's here's another point, you know. In, in that that article about the uh, the Mexican, they said that one in ten thousand has the gene. Yeah. Well, if it's one in ten thousand. How many people were in that room that happened to be one? It was way above. It. What was it? One in ten, not one in ten thousand. Right. It's you not the that gene. That's just an excuse they give you to say you're predisposed to have seizures after you get a vaccine. It's okay. You'll be fine once the seizure passes. That's their that's their cover story. Now my son just had a baby uh, six months ago. Mm -hmm. He's been totally unvaccinated, and he is the bright. I mean, you can just look in his eyes and just see the sparkle and see the the joy and, and see the, the wonderment that he has, you know, everything. It's, it's amazing. A, it's a totally different yeah. story. Now, thank, good, thank goodness that my four-year-old granddaughter, whose name is Harmony, um, uh, and thankfully, uh, you know, she is, she is Harmony. I mean, in a true sense. Uh, thank goodness that she didn't fall susceptible to that Russian roulette of vaccinations. Yeah. Because how many people do, you know? A lot so, of people do. That's uh, sad. You know, uh, both of them now are, are totally off vaccines. They're totally healthy. And thank God that, that they didn't uh, suffer any, any truly adverse. Now, who knows? You know, five years, ten years down the road, uh, maybe my granddaughter, who, who did have the, the vaccine, you know, I had no idea. I saw him. I, I was there, and I saw him vaccinate by 12 hours. She wasn't even three hours old. When they gave her the Hep B vaccine, mm -hmm. yeah, it just it just it just blows my mind. So it was was the the three uh, three hour old baby. Were, were they using intravenous drugs? Were they having anal sex? I mean, that's why you get the Hep B vaccine if you're leading that kind of lifestyle, and you believe that it actually works. But you don't get it. You don't give it to babies who aren't practicing that. But they do that to cover the nurses who might have Hep B. It's it's disgusting. They're more concerned with how their outlook appears, and, and, and instead of the real, the children's health, that's not what they're concerned with. They're concerned with the bottom line. We are taking as many of your phone calls as we can at this point with your vaccine stories. How have you been impacted in your life by vaccines? Because that's what it all comes down to. What is the final interaction? How do we get this message out to people? How do we let them know that these things aren't safe and effective like they like to beat it over your head over and over again? Um, here's an article that came out. Prominent vaccine denier site applauds Trump for saying vaccines can cause autism. And I believe the, it looks like the, art, uh, the article came out of Natural News and Think Progress was trying to, uh, he's already secured the racist vote. Now Donald Trump is saying vac swaying vaccine truthers. So you can tell where their head is lying. They want to have, they believe in herd immunity. That's what their problem is. Now, last night on the uh, InfoWars Nightly News, which airs every night, 7 p.m. Central, you can find it here on InfoWars.com. You can find it at PrisonPlanet.tv. And then we also put it out on YouTube after it airs live here. But uh, Darren, Darren McBreen found a actual Gardasil ad that uh, it, it's about 30 seconds long. And, you know, I'll, I'll just, this is actually the truth. This is what they should be saying about Gardasil. So uh, here's that ad. Gardasil, destroying little girls' lives one injection at a time. And now, boys, too, can get the Gardasil shot. My stepson, 10 months ago, had the HPV 